Um, it's my pleasure to be here this evening to explain to you why social justice is cancer. Um, social justice is a very intrusive disease, and I'm going to explain as briefly as I can before we get into Q&A and, and talking to you guys, uh, in the context of law and order and immigration, why social justice is hurting precisely the people that it claims to help. It worms its way in, and before you know it, it starts choking the life out of its host. That's what cancer does. Now, like most American universities, um, social justice has been rotting your school from the inside. Just last year, the student government passed a resolution to ban the display of national flags, including the American flag, in student government offices. Straight out of... Mm, straight out of... We should sing, shouldn't we? We should sing. They don't like patriotism, though. We should sing. Can you A bit high there, so, uh, straight out of central casting, a fellow named Matthew Guevara, probably related to Che, explained that flags can serve as weapons for nationalism, and that the American flag has been flown in instances of colonialism and imperialism. This Che wannabe, who of course is the council representative from the School of Social Ecology, <laughs> used some very specific social justice buzzwords like a culturally inclusive space and allow everyone to participate equally and confidently. This is social justice cancer in action right here on your campus. Now the facts show that UC Irvine is not too far gone. It's time to save you. That's why I'm here. It's not too late because the resolution was vetoed. It's fascinating to see how sensible people are repulsed by the interactions with social justice warriors. For example, the alumni and potential students at Missouri who have spoken with their wallets. Anyone else happened at Missouri? Yeah. Admissions down 33%, I think. They had to close well, They had to close two dorms. Now, if you look to listen to any more of my talks, you'll know what oh, sorry, I'm so hot in this. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you're studying my other talks, you might know they've had to close two dorms because they've got so few new um, applications. Do you know what those dorms are called? They're the two things you lose when you indulge in social justice. They are called strength and excellence. <laughs> um, <laughs> they've, uh, they've, uh, they're also alumni donations down, I think, probably at the latest count, about $40 million. Um, good. <laughs> for a closer, for a closer home example, consider the Asian population in California. UC Irvine is 58% Asian, Asian, sorry, a group that has traditionally voted Democrat and supported policies like affirmative action. Now social justice has turned against Asians, with many schools discounting Asian test scores for being too high, punishing them because they work too hard, and California, and California threatening to change their own enrollment rules for a more diverse enrollment. Asians have quickly and strongly moved against these measures, which is why I see so many of them in my talks, I think. Um, Black Lives Matter tries to turn young men like Michael Brown and Jamal Clark into martyrs, but these guys aren't angels. It reminds me of when the UVA it reminds me of the UVA rape case, which is feminism's flagship battle in the fight against a supposed rape epidemic on campus. Except, of course, it wasn't true. Neither was the Duke of Cross case. Neither was uh, Emma Solkowitz at the University of Columbia, mattress girl. All of these marquee and flagship cases seem to turn out to be hoaxes. The best examples they can come up with, in fact are hoaxes. And Black Lives Matter's leadership is a disgrace. There's Sean King, who isn't even black. <laughs> and, you know, let's, let's see what comes out in the press about all that charity money, but I think we know what's happened to that. DeRay, who's better known for his vest than any actual achievements, and lesser stars like Charles Wade, who was arrested for prostitution and allegedly is also a charity scammer. Now, Chicago is the perfect case study for Black Lives Matter. Chicago, of course, being the home of DePaul, I was out recently and uh, stopped. It's the, the only event I've ever had to stop. Uh, it's the only thing I've ever had to call short. It's Obama's hometown, because of course it is, 
uh, run, by, <laughs> <laughs> run by Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who was Obama's chief of staff and worked in the Clinton White House as well. Chicago is a very gun-unfriendly city. Combined with complete domination of the local government by Democrats, it should be a paradise for black residents, given that guns are banned everywhere, right? I thought that's how it worked. Like, there's a gun crime, you just say, okay, guys, no more guns, and all of the killers and crazies go, oh, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is this, of course, this is what lays bare the, the insanity of the liberal mind. You know, there's a shooting at a school, or there's a shooting at a, at a, at a shopping centre, or a military base, and their answer is less guns, not more, so that people can't protect themselves against crazy people who, of course, if you just simply put up a sign saying, no guns here, please, would obviously listen. <laughs> After my speech at DePaul uh, was shut down by Black Lives Matter, they were quoted in the press saying, I threatened their physical safety and could cause a massacre. <laughs> <laughs> They said, they said my words could cause a massacre. Well, the massacre did come to Chicago, but it had nothing to do with me. Over Memorial Day weekend, there were 69 shootings in Chicago. The majority of them were black-on-black -black crime. This ended the deadliest month of May in 21 years. This wasn't a massacre prompted by a gay man's opinions. It was black men pointing guns at other black men, a subject on which Black Lives Matter has nothing to say. Murder was up 40% during the month, and Mayor Emanuel told the press club, we've had some success. <laughs> I don't know how he defines failure, probably like other liberals. <laughs> Shootings are up 50% year over year, the third year of increases in Chicago, and these are not legal guns being used. Cracking down on people's legal rights to own firearms, cracking down the Second Amendment, which Obama clearly hates, is not going to save lives. If you doubt that, and there's sometimes some idiot in the back saying, where's your shit from? Um, this is the liberal Chicago Tribune, so you can look up yourself. Uh, if you think murder in Chicago is white people in the fancy parts of town, I'm afraid you're mis mistaken. Murder in Chicago is a black problem. Black Lives Matter wants nothing to do with it. There have been almost as many murders in Chicago since 2001 as there have been soldiers who have died in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. There's only a gap of about 900 between the 8,300 combat deaths and the 7,400 Iraq murders. One of, the one of the major law and order problems we have in America is a group that the social justice cancer types love to support, illegal aliens. They're their favorite people. There are at least 11.3 million illegals in America. Um, Pew Research says that's probably much higher. Uh, six states account for 60% of illegal immigrants. California, Texas, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Illinois. That's also from Pew. When I walked in, you didn't think you were gonna learn things today, did you? Um, <laughs> illegals make up 5% of the American workforce. Interesting, 5%. One in 20 people working is illegal. Um, who do you think uh, suffers from that the most? Working class people, blacks, Hispanics, people who came here legally, people who don't have a lot of money, who are here legally and who want to work and want to get by. And of course the white working classes, which only really Donald Trump has bothered to speak to in the last 45 years of conservative politics, so you can thank him for that. <laughs>